U substitution is basically the integration version of the chain rule. It's technically undoing the chain rule from the derivative. So long story short, here's what U substitution is. It's basically a way to take an integral that we are having a hard time solving and to swap out the x's with another letter. Usually we call it u, but you could really call it anything. It's basically a way to change the variable and instead of x, calling it a different variable and then turning it into an easier integral to solve in the process. So here, looking at this, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to replace the x and the dx with something that has a u instead. Now, when you're first doing this, the only hard part when you're first doing it is to, uh, to strategically know what you should pick as your x. So usually a good rule of thumb when you're doing, uh, it won't always work, but for the most part, uh, a good first attempt when you're dealing with an exponential function like this, where your x itself is in the exponent, is to set the exponent equal to u. So let's just do this whole process once, see how it works for one example problem, and we'll talk about strategies and a few more problems. So first of all, if instead of this exponent being called 6x plus 1, we call that u. So if we set u equal to 6x plus 1, then what, what, what can we do? What all can we substitute? Now keep in mind, here in this type of notation, the derivative of x is just dx rather than 1. And so here, looking at this, if u is equal to 6x plus 1, then the derivative du is equal to, let's see, 6, the derivative of a constant times your variable, just 6 times and then dx, like I said, just that's just the notation we use. Um, and then the derivative of one is zero. So here, this is just the derivative of this guy is six dx. So what that means is looking at this, you can, there's a couple of ways to go about this. You can now look at this and you can either directly substitute. You can either look at this and directly say, hey, if I wanted to use this, swap out these guys, I could, you can just notice that the 6dx is kind of staring at us. You know, this is all multiplication, so the order doesn't matter. You could write this as, you know, e to the 6x plus 1 times 6dx, right? If you just swap the position of these two, then it's 6dx, and you could then replace the 6dx with du. And so, and this exponent is literally just u. So long story short, you could call this, uh, you, you can already know that you can call this e to the u, and then times du. But let's say you didn't notice that 6dx thing. The more objective thing to do is literally just to solve for the dx here. So here if I divide both sides by 6, I get du over 6 is my dx. And so now what I can do is I can, sub so I can substitute there. So here if I simplify this, I get integral of 6 e to the power of 6x plus 1, but that I know is u. That was the whole point of this. The whole reason we're even doing this is because we can't just integrate this directly because this exponent here, 6x plus 1, itself has a derivative, right? So it has a derivative, and so we can't just, uh, that would involve the chain rule, and so we can't just use uh, the regular integration for that. We need to essentially make that exponent something like just a variable, like x or u. But anyway, so we substitute that out with what we wanted, but then this dx we said is just du over 6. And then here, the sixes cancel. So we're left with just e to the u du. That's sort of what I said earlier. Like if you just notice that, oh yeah, 6 dx is the derivative of, you know, this. But either case, you have the integral of e to the u du. And now that's easy to solve. The, the integral of e to the u is just e to the u. So and technically plus c. So our final answer is e to the u plus c. But that's where we go one last step. Now we could swap back out. u is 6x plus 1. This is going to equal e to the u, but u is really 6x plus 1. And then finally we have plus c. So now we've just solved for this indefinite integral over here of this guy, and we thought that it's this boxed guy over here. Uh, and again, you can always verify your answer. Take the derivative of this, the derivative of e to the anything is just that same thing, e to the 6x plus 1, times the derivative of the, uh, of the exponent, and the derivative of 6x plus 1 is just 6, so that's why that gets multiplied out. So the derivative is, in fact, this guy, 6 times e to the 6x plus 1. So that's like a basic example of it. So like I said, the main strategy here is just picking the u. Once you pick the u, 
you just take the derivative, keeping in mind the only different thing here compared to before is that the derivative of x is no longer 1, but just dx. And once you keep that in mind, you then solve for dx, and then you plug in for dx, you plug in for u, and then you get it all down to just u's and du's. And the whole point is that it should then be an easier integral that you can then solve. So let's try another example. Let's take a look at this guy over here, uh, this red guy. So here, again, this looks like a massive integral that's like we don't want to have to deal with. We don't want to have to try to solve this. So let's see what we can do. So like I said, usually the first thing to try is to see if the exponent itself works as our u. So if it does, let's just try here. So if u equals 2x squared plus 10x, then the derivative should be, the du should be, let's see, the derivative of 2x squared is 4x, technically dx, but I'll factor that out, plus then the derivative of 10x is just 10, and technically 10 dx. And again, since the dx applied to both terms, I just factor that out. Um, ultimately, by the way, for this, you could just literally plug in a dx at the end. You could just find the derivative the way you normally would and just throw in a dx at the end and that'll work. So in either case, here again, it's clearly, let's just be strategic here, it's visible here. Ah, the 4x plus 10 times dx, like this times this, is my du. So, you know, again, you could divide both sides by 4x plus 10, plug that in for dx, have them cancel out, but in either case, you could also just recognize that 4x plus 10 times dx, that product is du, so these two get substituted out with just du, and what's left here, e to the power of that thing, is just e to the power of u, because u was that exponent. So e to the u, du. Ah, here it literally ended up being a very similar, the same type of problem. Uh, e to the u, du, and the integral of this is just e to the u plus c. And then remember the u is, in this case, 2x squared plus 10x. So, so there you go, this. And again, take the derivative of that and make sure you get this bad boy. And uh, yeah, and then that works. So that's the overall process. Now let's just do one more example here. So, so let's say the example now is this, where we have the integral of x cubed times uh, this expression, two times x to the fourth plus nine, uh, all to the eighth power, and then a dx over here. So how do we do that? So usually, what you're looking for here to solve for the u, to find the u, to pick the u. So the u is again, it's something you're picking. So usually whenever you have something that's to like a higher power, and you can see that the derivative of the inside, or at least, uh, you know, is on the outside. So here the derivative, this is a fourth power. And so the derivative is gonna be a cubic function, a third degree thing, right? Because the four will come down, it'll be become a cubic function. So that's like a sign there that, that that'll work. So here if we pick, uh, so yeah, if you could see the derivative, or at least mostly, if you could see the derivative, or at least the derivative, even if it's off by like a constant to multiply by, if you could see the derivative elsewhere, then that's like a strategy. But really, ultimately, the only way to do this is if you do enough problems and you, um, and really there's, for the most part, depending on what, what you're doing with this, really the exponential type problems that we just did and these type of problems are really the only two main ones. And and with trig problems, if you're, you know, if you have to know trigs, but but in either case, um, so here, uh, if we pick the u as two x to the fourth plus nine, and then the the du the derivative is, let's see, the derivative here is just eight x cubed, and then plus nine is zero, so just eight x cubed dx. So now we could just solve for dx and get du over 8x cubed is my dx. So here, substituting that into the integral, the integral is the integral of x cubed and then times 2x to the fourth plus nine. That whole thing is u. So this is, by the way, where the name comes from, u substitution. I'm substituting that whole thing with u, that's u to the eighth power, and then times dx, where dx I just found is du over 8x Cube. And here the x cubes cancel. If they didn't cancel, by the way, that means that it didn't work. That means you should have, you should pick a different u because the whole point is you want to substitute it out. You can't have any x's left. In what you have left, you should only have u's and a du. So here now looking at this, yeah, now we just have 
this is eight in the denominator. So it's easier to just pull that out. So if I have one eighth, then I'm here left with just u to the power of eight, and then du. And so now, now I can easily integrate this. So the one eighth can just stay there, and the integral of u to the eighth power is u to the ninth power over nine. Which again, I could simplify this as u to the ninth power over eight times nine is seventy two. So u to the ninth power over seventy two, and technically plus c. But I could before that I could just substitute out what the u really was if I want to report my final answer with x's, and so that's going to be two x to the fourth plus nine. So that's what my u is. So that to the ninth power divided by just the number seventy two plus c. So that would be your answer. And again, take the derivative of this. Take the nine out. You know you'll get the eight. Um, and then you know here just to just to make sure this works, what we can do is. Uh, if I take the derivative, here's here's what I'm checking for when I take the derivative. So this is what I'm claiming is my final answer. The derivative would be um, the nine comes down, so I get nine, and then I still have the seventy-two on the bottom, and then two x to the fourth plus nine to the eighth power now, right? So here. So when I take it down, I get this, and then times with the chain rule, the derivative of the inside is 8x cubed. And then finally, the 9 over 72 is just 8. The 8 cancels with this. And I'm just left with 2x to the 4th plus 9 to the 8th power, and then times this x cubed. And this is exactly what the original problem was. To find the integral of that thing, the order, again, for the multiplication doesn't matter. So that's, again, how you can verify your answer just by taking the derivative of your final answer to make sure that you got the original thing under the integral, and that's how you know you did it right.